right, welcome to First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy and the book that I am going to be reading the first chapter of today is called How to Become a Planet by Nicole Mellaby. And this book is about a girl named Pluto and the book starts when she is 12. At the beginning of the book, we learn that Pluto has had a meltdown and her mother had to break down her door to get in and help her. It was scary for the two of them. And at that point, Pluto is diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And because of this, she misses 34 days of school, the entire last month of seventh grade. Her mother homeschools her while Pluto tries to learn to manage her depression and anxiety. But this is very difficult for her. She's on medication and she can function, but she doesn't feel like herself entirely. It's summer and she's worried about if she'll be able to start eighth grade, having missed a whole month of seventh grade. She doesn't know how to reconnect with her friends, especially her best friend, Meredith, who she kind of ignored when she was going through the worst of her depression. So she makes a list of all the things that she needs to do, sort of the milestones to, she needs to cross off, even if they're very simple, like going to a party to come back to herself and feel like the Pluto that she knew. If she doesn't achieve some of the things on this list and she isn't able to start eighth grade, she might have to go live with her father in New York City. And she's not sure that she wants to do that, nor does her mother really want her to do that. Her mother and Pluto are very close. Pluto has a good therapist and she makes a new friend named Fallon. Fallon wears boys clothes and fights to be able to style her hair like her brother's but she's still working out what that means for her. So Fallon also makes a wish list of how to feel like herself. And the two of them sort of become friends and try to tackle the things on their list together. This is a great book that deals really honestly and sensitively with depression and anxiety as Pluto goes through her struggle. So I will now read chapter one of How to Become a Planet. Criterion number one. A planet must orbit the sun. Chapter one. Pluto was on the phone with the Hayden Planetarium astronomy question and answer hotline, trying to find out how to create a black hole when her mom broke down Pluto's bedroom door. Pluto wasn't allowed to lock her door, but that night the rule didn't stop her. She just needed to keep everyone, everything out so she could just, just stop just turn off the lights and shut her eyes and stop, which was something she had been thinking more and more about lately. Hence, the black hole. But she couldn't do that, couldn't stop or think or anything with the way her mom was pounding on the door, shouting over and over, open the door, Pluto, let me in, just open the door. The voice on the other end of the phone was jovial and kind as they explained how black holes were created. But that wasn't right, wasn't what Pluto wanted. She knew how black holes were created in space. She knew that it took a dying star, an explosion, and a gravitational game of tug of war. That didn't help her here, now. Pluto felt heavy sadness, a weight that pushed down on her chest, and she could hear her mom sobbing as silent tears fell down Pluto's cheeks. That weight and Pluto's reaction to it was too much, too dramatic. It was too dark in her bedroom, when it was sunny and spring through her window. She was too shut down for someone who confided everything to her mother. Her mom's voice outside the door, Pluto, please, please open the door. The muffled voice on the other end of the phone, can we help you with anything else today? Pluto's head rested against her cold wall, light gray and plastered, with little glow in the dark stars she had tacked on with her mom when she was four. She picked at one with her thumbnail, pulling it off and taking bits of the gray paint with it. She couldn't explain what happened next, only that the sadness turned to anger in her chest and she knew those little stars wouldn't help her. They wouldn't die and explode and suck her into their dense nothingness. And she was mad at them. She was mad at those little stars and at the voice on the other end of the planetarium hotline and at her mom and at herself. And she needed the stars to come down. She needed them to stop glowing. She dropped the phone and ignored her mom and she pulled at those stars one by one, yanking paint off the wall and throwing them away. It still wasn't enough to make everything stop. And she reached for the books on her bookcase, the astronomy ones her mom had bought her every year for her birthday, and she threw them too, reveling in the sound of hard thumps as they hit the walls and the floor. 
She reached for her brand new book too, the one about the Challenger sitting on her desk next to her mom's old computer, the one her dad had sent to try and make her feel happy, which was ridiculous, really. The Challenger was a tragedy and Pluto had enough of her own sadness lately. She held the book up as high as she could, but before she could launch it across the room, she heard a loud splintering crack, which was just as satisfying really, like something huge crashing down, 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 but it was just her wooden door and then her mom's arms were holding her tight. And that is the end of chapter one of How to Become a Planet. And right in the beginning, we see that Pluto is really experiencing some deep depression. It's weighty to read about, but Nicole Mellaby does it really well. Her writing is very good and she does it with depth and feeling. And we really get a sense of what Pluto is experiencing in that moment. So I hope that you read more of How to Become a Planet by Nicole Mellaby. You will see how Pluto grows and changes and learns to become herself.